Good morning, I'm Mark Kressel. I am the development director with the Omaha Conservatory of Music. I've been here about three years. The conservatory teaches over 2000 students every week, uh, ranging from age one to age 93. That's awesome. How long have you, you said you've been there three years? Three years last week, actually, yes. Wow, happy anniversary. Thanks. Yeah, and you also um, took care of your wife. Yes, I did. So you My wife uh, um, had cancer for the last five and a half years. And she fought valiantly, but uh, uh, finally succumbed uh, this last summer. Yeah, that was a long journey. Yeah, yeah. it was. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about music for caregivers and the people that they're caring for, because I think it's such a, a big part of our many people's lives. And yes. there's so many benefits to it. And so I just wanted to get your input on how caregivers could be using, like what is the benefit and how could they be using music in their homes? Well, there's a few things, and, and I can speak from two, two angles. I can speak from a personal angle as a caregiver, uh, which I have been for the last year or so. And I can also speak from uh, a kind of a more um, clinical uh, standpoint, just what research has, has borne out. And, um, you know, for a caregiver, music is something, and I used it a lot. I'm a big music person, and, mm -hmm. um, and music, I could control my moods. Um, it would uh, reduce anxiety. Uh, you know, dealing with someone who is battling cancer can be pretty stressful. Yeah. Um, I used music and it's, it'd be different types of music. It was almost like a prescription with me. It would be, you know, if I was feeling pretty stressed out, then something classical would most likely calm me down and things like that. If I was feeling, um, you know, like I was running out of energy and, and, uh, and starting to feel that I couldn't keep up. I went with something a little bit more upbeat and it kind of energized me and charged me and things like that. Luckily, my wife was also a big music person. And so we would listen a lot of times together. And it was something that from her standpoint, you know, uh, improved her mental health a lot. It, it, you know, when you know you are dying, um, it's, I can't imagine because I've never faced it, but to have to deal with that every day, you, you wake up in the morning knowing that your days are numbered. Yeah. And, that, and uh, music was one of her outlets and music was a way that she kept herself calm and kept herself relaxed and kept herself grounded. Um, I slept better. I would put something kind of mild on in the evenings before I go to sleep and, and I would find myself sleeping better. I mean, the benefits of music from a, a personal standpoint are quite, quite incredible. Um, then there's also clinical data. It's interesting that supports everything I just said. Yeah, um, that it can lower blood pressure, it can reduce anxiety, it can allow you to sleep better, it can change your moods. I mean, there are uh, research studies, you know, going back a number of years that are also very current that that kind of confirm the value of music. So I think a little bit of planning can go a long way because I think when you're in the thick of it with someone in that moment, it can it can be hard to know what you need. I mean. I know around here, we talk a lot about just your baseline human needs, like, okay, am I thirsty? Have I eaten? That sort yes. of thing. Um, but so it, I don't know how to help people trigger that thought, like, maybe I should turn on some music. That's a, it's an interesting uh, angle to look at, and I've never thought of it in that terms, because I was always able to... Um, kind of keep up with that type of thing mainly because I was doing all the cooking in the house and so mm -hmm. I was feeding her and, and you know making sure that she was well fed and therefore feeding myself you know the I, I guess the times that that come to mind would perhaps be sometimes when I'm maybe starting to push the burnout stage a little bit you know where I've been at the office all day long and I you know I've been working and and yeah. doing my job and I come home and it's you change hats and you suddenly put on the nurse's hat and you start dealing with that and it can be easy to burn out, although I was highly motivated, of course, because it was my wife. And, and so I never felt like, like I did, but I did reach points to where um, I, I started to feel a little bit overwhelmed. 
Yeah. And, and, and I remembered that I needed to take care of myself. And there are a few ways to do it with me. There's a couple of things I can do to relax. One involves my camera. I'm a photographer mm -hmm. and I can take a few pictures, but probably the primary one I went with was music because music will always affect me every yeah. time. Well, and it's like a time machine, right? So you'll hear a song and all of a sudden it's absolutely 1981 and you're in that place with those people. Yes. Having a experience. Yeah. And it's not just that. It's I just had this conversation with somebody the other day is that I heard a song. It was a commercial on television, but it was a song that took me back to my childhood. And it not only took me to a very specific point in time to that I remembered all the visuals, but I remembered the smells of that time where it was at a lake. And I remembered the smell of the water and wow. I remember the smell of the barbecue and it brought it back so vividly. And it was just a song that I probably haven't heard in 35, 40 years. So you saying that reminds me that we were sitting around the dinner table one night when you talked about commercials and my mother-in-law has dementia and she currently lives in an assisted living memory care. Um, and it wasn't, I mean, it really wasn't that long ago that we did this, but we started singing the O'Reilly jingle. <laughs> oh, 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 right. And each of us had a part, right? So I don't even know what prompted this at our family dinner table. It's hysterical. So we were going around the table, but she was able to actually engage with that and like do her part in a timely fashion. So like you were mentioning the song that was played in the commercial kind yeah. of jettisoned you back. Well, and you know, and having come from before being here, of course, I worked in senior care and, and also in support of a memory care uh, residence and in a nursing home. And we had just one example I love is we had a woman in the nursing home that was, I'm guessing mid to upper eighties uh, in a wheelchair, completely nonverbal. Mm -hmm. um, I, she had been there probably a year that I had been there and never heard her speak a word or anything like that. And it was, you know, it's, it's sad because a lot of it's with a lot of people in nursing care, it's, it's a simply an existence. Yeah. It's, it's, I exist today. I don't live, but I exist. Mm -hmm. My heart beats, I eat and I go to sleep and then I do it again. And I would see her so often they'd have her in the TV room and she'd have her head down and I never saw her face. She had this long hair. And, uh, and then one day I went upstairs and they had moved a piano. Somebody had donated a piano. They moved the piano to that floor. And she indicated somehow to a nurse that she wanted to go look at the piano and they pulled her up to it and she started playing. And I'm telling you it, she played incredibly. I mean, I work in a music conservatory. This was a woman and we later found out she taught piano lessons for 40 years. Oh my gosh. And suddenly she not only played, but then she turned because I went and sat next to her on the bench and was watching her. And I just said, that is incredible. And she turned to me and said, thank you. First words I'd heard in a year from her. Oh, that gives me but chills. Music, music can have that effect on memory care people. In fact, you know, we used to um, uh, get little iPods and we would put music. We didn't know necessarily what a resident listened to in the 40s, perhaps, or in the 50s, but we'd pull like popular music from that period of time and we'd play it for them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, especially with dementia uh, residents, um, if they were agitated or or um, highly energized or things like that, playing them something from the Glenn Miller Orchestra, for example, or even something from Elvis yeah. would suddenly change their mood. And it goes back to it can reduce anxiety, it can reduce your blood pressure, and it can change your mood and it can help sleep better. So, I mean, music is, is absolutely a therapeutic uh, thing. Well, and I think based on those studies, what they found was it's the eras of someone's age between age 20 to 40 are the most impactful because that's those are such strong developmental years um, mm -hmm. in, a, in adulthood. So just if you're a caregiver at home to think about not just your family member, your loved one that you're taking care of, you know, what years, I think that's such a great idea, what years uh, were they in their 20s to 40s? And then also for yourself. Sure. Because it's interesting. If you told me, if you asked me to produce a playlist right now, I think I would struggle to come up with some favorite songs. But I think if if I looked them up, I'd be like, oh yeah, I remember that one. See, I wouldn't have any trouble, but all the songs would be from the 80s, which was when I was in my 30s. 
Yeah. And, you know, because that was a period of time where I was really deep into music and things like that. And, uh, um, and I, and I still listen to that all the time. I mean, um, that is, that's kind of my go-to for, for relaxing. If you said, you know, create a playlist of music that's been recorded in the last 10 years, I wouldn't hold your breath because I don't yeah. think I could find you 10 songs that I've known that have been recorded in the last 10 years. But some like Steely Dan or Linda Ronstadt or Absolute, something. Absolutely. You're going to hit the mark. Yep. I think this is so powerful, Mark. I think this is such a great conversation because caregivers at home really are struggling for resources. And to your point, we don't want to just survive our days. We want to thrive within them. Um, and so how can we provide a great life experience for the people that we're taking Absolutely. care of? Well, so. and, and, you know, the, the music part of the brain um, is one of the last things to go in dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Um, there are so many studies and there are so many examples of people who were really advanced uh, in, in Alzheimer's that music somehow kind of awakened them to some extent and, and what have you. And I mean, I've got a good friend here in Omaha whose mother, uh, she's been a singer and she's been a singer her whole life and lived on the coast for years and years, but her mother had developed Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. So she moved back here to help care for her. And, and this woman happens to be a blues singer and she is phenomenal and she'll sing Sarah Vaughn and, and uh, Ella Fitzgerald and, and performs. I've seen her perform a number of times. Wow. She sent me a video a few weeks ago, I guess probably about a few months ago, where she can't see her mother now because she's in a nursing home. She's in a memory care home. And her mother has, has advanced Alzheimer's disease and is very, um, uh, you know, nonverbal, doesn't communicate at all and, and that. And so she sent me this video of standing outside a window with her mother sitting inside that window in her wheelchair. And her mother was like this. Wow. And she sang an old song that she used to, a gospel tune that she used to sing in their house. And you could see my friend's reflection in the glass and her mother right it was one of the most moving things i've ever seen yeah. and i don't know that her mother reacted to it but i can tell you therapeutically for the daughter it was an enormous thing yeah to be able to share that gift with their mother what a what a great idea even if geographically you can't be together record yourself singing a song Yes. And send it to the care facility. There's technology within the building. Send it to the care facility and they can play it for them. Yes. I just spoke to somebody. I mean, seriously, last night, a friend of mine that, that works in a nursing home and not a caregiver is a, a more a, a dietitian type, you know, so uh, but like everybody that works in a, in a nursing home you become close to some of the residents and things like sure. that. And that was certainly the case for her. And, and she talked about how one of her favorite residents um, was failing health wise, you know, mm -hmm. it was advanced and how she just sat with her and sang to her. She's a singer too. And she sat and sang with her yesterday and she said, and you could just see the peace it brought her. And she goes, and it just, she goes, I can't describe the feeling it brought me. And so, yeah. you know, the benefit is not just for, the uh, the elder person it is also for the caregiver because when you when you do that and you see that you're having an impact um, it can soothe your soul pretty good too so powerful I feel like you've given a really a lot of really good uh, suggestions and information so if someone has a musical instrument in their home and it's something that anybody has taught or played regularly try and re-engage them in that absolutely um, that 20 to 40 time period age span can be really impactful. And I loved your suggestion of just looking up what were the most popular songs. Sure. Um, people because still the have... chances are whether or not it was their favorite song, they knew the song. Sure. You know, I hear songs from the 70s. I hear songs from the 70s, my high school and college years that, that uh, um, you know, I never had the record, but I hear it on the radio and I know every word. Right. Because I heard it so many times back then. Yeah. Um, there's so many platforms now on yes. how to access music. And YouTube is, is there's a lot of stuff out on YouTube that's free. Yes. So you can just search them out. And it used to be, like I said, we used iPods. And now you don't need that. I mean, you have Spotify or you have, you know, you have these music services that you can do for free. 
Right. And create a playlist of your own. And, you know, and again, you know, and especially in memory care, I find that that uh, um, if a person is agitated and things like that, music is the most likely solution to calming them because wow. music kind of reaches a point a part of their brain and it, and it kind of soothes their soul a bit and uh, um, and they, they tend to react to it. Are your teachers at the conservatory doing lessons by Zoom or in person right now or a combination? Both. Both. We, uh, we offer the uh, students and the teachers the option. If you want to come in, like I take piano lessons and yeah. I do them here. Um, I do them in person. I did them virtually for three months and that went actually fine. But we're probably, we have um, uh, on campus about 800 students a week. And I would guess that probably it's about a half and half at this point between virtual and, and in-person lessons. Okay. I have several friends in their 40s that have started piano lessons. Yep, I started is, at 61. Which is so fun. Yeah. Yeah. I just, in fact, I was in a meeting this morning and, and uh, you know, going over through numbers. I'm the fundraiser person and, you know, you go through the numbers and you got a to-do list and there's 30 things on it. And I'm looking at my watch and I see that you and I are going to be talking in about 15 minutes. And I thought I got 15 minutes. So I went up to a studio and I sat down at the piano and, and I played for about five minutes and totally chilled me out. And I came back down here and now I'm here. It's a good reset. I do that two or three times a day. Wow. It's a good reset. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I love, it's hard for caregivers to get out a lot of times. So I love the idea that they could potentially do something for themselves virtually um, where they're still in their home. Absolutely. With their family member. So, well, thank Absolutely. you for your time. I think this was a great discussion. My pleasure. And I really appreciate it. You bet. All right. Thanks, Mark. You bet.